The Supreme Court <clears throat> is currently, or not currently, they already did it, it's gone, it's over with. So they were hearing challenges to President Biden's vaccine mandates. And as you know, if you were in a job that has more than 100 people, if this passes, if this goes through, they will start, you know, hey, you either have to get the vaccine to work or you have to get mandatory testing every single week. That's just the way that the law is shaping up. So this is the story. The Supreme Court hears arguments on Friday regarding the legality of two major vaccine initiatives from the Biden administration efforts to address the COVID-19 pandemic in the workplace. The policies at stake include a vaccine or test requirement for workers at large employers and a vaccine mandate for workers at health care centers. Challengers say uh, Congress has not authorized the measures, added that they are unnecessary and in some ways counterproductive. The New York Times reports, and then that was like a Twitter thing, so keep it here for the latest, right? So I, they were they were speaking about this during the trial. They were kind of like the judges or the justices, whatever you want to call them. They were kind of like, why isn't you know Congress creating the law for this? Why are we ha having to be the ones to debate if you know whatever Joe Biden's executive order power he's trying to push? Why are we doing that, right? And I honestly believe this, there's a reason for that. I honestly believe, and this is just me because I'm starting to really feel like I got kind of a groove on how politics and shit like that works. Congress doesn't want to talk about it or make a bill about it or vote on it because they don't want to be tied to that decision. Because, you know, you can see what people yes to, you can see what people no to, right? So there's probably a bunch of, because obviously the Republicans, they're, they're going to they're gonna all know. They're going to be all know. They're not fucking with it. They're done, right? But I do feel like there are certain Democrats that don't really like the idea of mandates, but they know if they'd sign their name on that dotted line, they are now the new target. Like, they see what the fuck's happened to Joe, uh, Joe Manchin. He's a target. He's pretty much enemy number one in Democratic, you know, media world as far as not being able to pass bills, right? So I feel like it's like a cop-out. So, hey, let the Supreme Court do it. We're not going to fucking deal with it because we don't want our names attached to it. And if the Supreme Court uh, denies it, I would just say, that's because Republicans run the, 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 the. Like, to me, it looks like a political tactic and a political ploy. That's, that's what it looks like to me to rush it to a Supreme Court decision. And what do you think of Supreme Court justice, right? Because I'm going on to information that was spoken about in the trial. What do you think about Supreme Court justice, right? You think that, and, I, and this is, I'm definitely, I don't fucking think I'm smarter than Supreme Court justice. Do not even, when I'm speaking about this, do not even think that that is what I'm saying. I do not think I'm smarter than a lot of these people that are sitting on the Supreme Court. I mean, obviously when it comes to law, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. But when it comes to information about COVID, there's a Supreme Court justice, right? Justice Sotomayor, she's, Appointed, I believe she was appointed by Barack Obama while he was still the president of the United States. And obviously in these trials, they have to bring up certain things, right? So they have to bring up, you know, why they believe it should be or why it shouldn't be. So she started bringing up coronavirus facts that are completely false, right? We, like us people on the internet who speak about these things are vilified just by saying, you know, I believe in mandates, or, I don't believe in this, I don't believe in that, whatever, whatever, whatever. We have a Supreme Court just who, who is, who has the power to either yay or nay, obviously she needs the, uh, the majority vote, but she still has a powerful position. And she's put out statistics like this. <coughs> she said, COVID deaths are at an all time high. If she's claiming that there's 5 million people that have died from COVID around the world, and now today there's 5 million and one, so now we are at all time high, then technically she's correct, right? If the date was 5 million this day and the next day is 5 million and one, she is correct. But if she's trying to say that in this very moment that we're having a surge, that deaths are at an all time high, she is either severely misinformed, and I wanna know who she listens to, who she reads, who she watches, or she's just a liar. She also claimed that Omicron has been deadlier than Delta, which is also a lie it's not there's scientists that have all kind of data all type of information to prove that i would i would recommend anybody this is what i'd recommend anybody who's watching me or anybody who watches me right and you're like i don't want to fucking listen to you d friend talk about statistics of corona and that's fine I don't, i'm not like mad oh no please i don't i don't care look up if you want like a very even killed just here's the stats i'm not gonna fear monger you i'm not gonna do any of those things Watch Dr. Not right now, watch me still, but watch Dr. John Campbell. He updates every day with statistics around the world, quotes from scientists all around the world. He might share you some numbers that you might look like, damn, that's a little bit wild, but it's not the same type of fear mongering statistics that you see media use to manipulate and, and you know, 
just make us think there's something going on. So Dr. John Campbell, that's who I watch, and I think he's a pretty um, good person at breaking down the stats for coronavirus. But anyway, she also said, claimed 100,000 children are hospitalized with COVID, which is not true. And then she said OSHA's regulatory authority is a federal police power, which she's obviously from how I look and how I sound, or I mean, how I'm feeling like she's saying, <laughs> LOL, not watch me. Yeah, because I don't, you know, motherfuckers like, oh, let me go watch him. No, 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 stay here and watch me. Don't jump off yet. You watch that motherfucker later, right? But the fact that we have a Supreme Court justice that is a potentially going to base her decisions off these statistics that are wrong, to me, is very troubling. I don't know if it's troubling to you, but to me, if we have a Supreme Court justice that's willing to stake her, her opinions or her decision on this that affects uh, tons of like we said, only sixty percent of America uh, Americans are fully vaccinated, right? So this is gonna affect a, a, a high amount of people, right? So the fact that her thought process on it is wrong to me is very troubling. It's very troubling. So there, I think they broke right. I was listening to it. I think when I started listening to it. It was really, they weren't really focusing on the large employer one where you like have over 100 employees, yada, yada, yada. They were more focused on the, the medical care field and how they can implement it within medical care facilities. They were bringing up things like, well, you know, I'm sure they got to do this just for the sake of argument because it is like kind of court. It is, you know, legal. It is whatever. They were saying shit like, well, what's the difference? If we have mandates that people in the hospitals must wear gloves and must wear masks to protect the da, 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 why can't we tell them that they must get vaccines? It's like, the dude said, uh, I'll do respect to your honors. We spoke about this with the with the court before y'all, because obviously y'all the highest court. We had to go through a bunch of different courts to get to you guys. We spoke with them. And they kind of agreed with us that you could take mask off when you get home. You could take gloves off when you go home. A vaccine is a medical procedure that stays with you. Well, then not forever because we see you got to get boosted, boosted, boosted. But it don't come off you. So that's why they don't think it should be. And they also brought up the fact they were saying, well, why don't we see any, you know, hospitals here complaining, right? They're, they were more like, well, I don't see any corporations complaining. And fuck the corporations. There's people complaining about it. the Mayo Clinic, one of the most prestigious hospitals in America, probably around the world. They just fired 700 people who weren't vaccinated. So obviously there are things going on where there are people like you're talking about the corporations. The corporations go do whatever the fuck they got to do, stay open, make money. And if they think that getting the vaccines is going to make them look like a hospital where people can come in and get money, they're going to do whatever they got to do. We're talking about the people. Fuck the corporation. We're talking about the people. What do people feel? Salute Vicky Love in the chat. What's up? So that's my thing about it. And they're going to make their decision, I'm sure, sometime next week. And I honestly feel like they're probably not going to pass it, right? There is a Republican, like, majority in it. And I don't want. And I don't know why we keep acting like, like oh, it's not political. It's, it's like, eh, we, we know. Like, that's why it's such a big fucking deal. And also, to me, the re remember how I spoke about earlier, if you watch it earlier, when I said, I think this is a political ploy to not put too much onus on Congress to make a move to where – <clears throat> Republicans got to put their name on the dotted line. Democrats got to put their name on the dotted line. It's more like, hey, this is going to be a thing for election year. This is a spectacle fucking thing, right? So if the Republicans in the, the Supreme Court say no to mask mandates, we've already seen yesterday in the video I put it, they want it to be a moral good to follow the rules, moral bad if you do not get the vaccine. Like, we already seen those things, right? It's a good and a bad. It's a good and evil. We've seen it. I showed it to you yesterday. This is going to be their introduction into, you know what we need to do? We need to pack the court, right? That slew, hey, Archer, see you later, big dog. Appreciate you for watching. We need to pack the court. This, to me, it just seems, it's, a, it's, it's, like, it's like chess. It's not checkers. We may see it as this thing right here, like it's in our face, like, okay, they're in front of the justice. But I see it as, okay, this is a, a good way for us to get the support from our people to start packing the court because we know a lot of our people really kind of fuck with the, they, well, they think that a lot of their people fuck with the vaccine mandates. But once they see, oh, we could never get shit passed with this majority Republican Supreme Court. Fuck it. Back the court. We support it. Fuck it. Do it. That's how I look at it, right? And I could be completely wrong, but that's how I fucking look at it. That's how I see it. And it makes sense to me how I'm saying it. Praise God, bro.